Hello again, uh, I've been getting into app design and uh, using Visual Studio and um, it's very easy to actually deploy onto an Android phone but actually quite a bit harder onto an iOS iPhone. In fact, you can, for, unless you join the Apple development program for a lot of money, uh, you can actually only uh, deploy it onto one device uh, using a scheme called free provisioning. And in order to do that, if you're particularly, I always work on a laptop, a PC, uh, you need a host Mac uh, in order to make that deployment onto the iPhone. Now my friend here, uh, Andy, has brought his Mac along and I'm paying him with scones. So we're gonna have a go at uh, doing this and we're following a description that uh, Microsoft has put up on their website. So let's have a look and see how we get on. So if you haven't already got an Apple development ID, you need to pop over to the Apple development website. Uh, look along the top, you'll see there's accounts, click on it. And below the login, there is a create new profile. And this is where you can create your new Apple ID. So on the uh, Mac, I've installed Xcode. I'm gonna run it up, create a new project. Gotta choose the platform. I'm gonna go for iOS uh, app and then hit next. This is where you've got to put in the name of the app and include it with the bundle. You're going to find this in the project under platform iOS and the info plus. It should read exactly the same. Next you're going to click on team, add account and add your new Apple ID credentials. This sets your personal team account, um, close down and then under team you want to select that account and then hit next. Then you want to choose a place where you want to store the new, pro new folder and hit create. And there we are, we're in. Next you want to plug your device in and you're going to switch on developer mode. Um, so go into system, spin down to get to privacy and security. And there's developer mode, switch it on, restart your device and uh, follow the instructions when the when the device reboots. So double click in the root of the folder brings you into this menu under general uh, you can select the minimum iOS that you want to use so I'm going to set it to 16 and then you want to go over to signing capabilities make sure automatic managed signing is ticked that your personal team is selected properly and that your bundle is uh, exactly the same as in the project. So at this point we go back over to the laptop um, and we want to pair up to a Mac. So go OK. As it happens, we found the Mac on the network already. Go to connect. Uh, if, if this is your first time, it will ask for login details and then it will start installing a load of stuff onto the Mac, including a thing called Mono. Okay, once it's all done, okay that. So once we've paired the Mac, we should be able to find the iPhone under remote devices. There's Nigel iPhone. Um, it's in debug mode. Go to project, go down to properties, wait for it to load up. Let's look at the iOS target. I'm gonna set the minimum target to 16 as before. Then I wanna go down to the bottom iOS and have a look at the bundle signing. Uh, under provision, we want to go from automatic to manual provision. And it's just uh, pop down a little bit more. Signing identity should be developer automatic and there's no matching profile. At this point, we should be able to install just by hitting the button for Nigel's iPhone and off we go. And here it comes. Boom. Try starting it and it's asking to for the app to be trusted. The way to do that is to go into systems. Go down to uh, general. Spool down to the bottom to get to VPN and devices. 
go into Apple Developer and there you will find it and just go Trust. Trust. Right. Coming out of that now, we can go back to the app and it should all fire up nicely. Well, there we are. Uh, I managed to get it done, although it has taken me about a week to actually uh, complete the exercise and create this video. Um, hopefully you found it interesting. Uh, I've made the video because I was struggling to understand how to get apps onto my iPhone and onto my iPad. Um, and um, anyway, if you found it interesting, give me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. I make videos like this, uh, things that take my interest, repairing things around the house. There are a few lessons to be learned uh, using free provisioning. Uh, the main big advantage is that you don't have to pay the $99 a year to join the Apple development uh, scheme uh, in order to get your app, which onto your phone or onto your iPad, which is good. But there is a limitation with free provisioning. Uh, the limitation is you can only use the free provisioning certificate for about six days and then it times out. And the way in which uh, the security works with Apple is that once you've used the bundle name and app name, uh, you can't reuse it which means I had this happen and what I ended up doing was just renaming the bundle just slightly different and then it started working again. The other limitation, it seems that I can only install onto devices that are uh, registered to me and using my Apple ID. Uh, so it's not easy to distribute round to your friends um, which is a shame really, it's not obviously a problem with Android phones or Windows. Anyway, there we go. Uh, given its limitation, it works fine. I thought it was a little bit uphill and the biggest problem I had is that I needed an Apple Mac uh, in order to be able to do this. Now, fortuitously, a friend of mine has lent me uh, a Mac Mini, uh, which is what I've been using for the latter part of the week just to um, get this install completed. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.